Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon and I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to beautiful Cairns. I'm in Cairns to be part of the Australian Council for Graduate Research and the ACGR is held twice a year. All the deans get together and talk about you talk about the importance of a PhD and research higher degrees in Australia. And the reason I'm in this space and the reason I thought I will record a vlog this week in beautiful Cairns is because of the topic of this week's vlog. This is vlog 59, what is a PhD? And this vlog comes via request, but this time it comes from a request from my wonderful friend, Associate Professor Malcolm Bond. Malcolm and I talk a great deal about the assumptions that exist in the research higher degree space. And Malk had a meeting with two of our PhD students in medicine a couple of week, weeks back. And this discussion was about what is a PhD? Now these were PhD students enrolled in a PhD program wondering what is a PhD focuses the mind and as most of you remember I had a, a fantastic series of emails with alas one of our PhD students uh, exploring the nature of the PhD examination. She said to me, oh look Tara thank you for all this information about examination but I'm enrolled in a PhD not a coursework masters so I'm not examined. I'm simply conducting some experiments in a lab and there is no examination for PhD students. Wow, okay, so therefore, once Malk and I talked about the challenges that were currently emerging this year, he suggested, you know what, let's do a vlog on basically what is a PhD. And as always, he is brilliant and he is also right. And why this is such an important topic is failure in all teaching and learning is based on assumptions not being shared between a student and a teacher and that's the truth in first year in undergraduate education but it's also a truth in the research higher degree space where assumptions are not shared between students and supervisors and that's why our students are asking in a doctoral program what is a PhD mm -hmm. so let's do a vlog on these assumptions so the stuff in my head it gets scary. The stuff in your supervisor's head, the stuff that exists in international regulations about the PhD. So when I use the word stuff, I mean knowledge. I mean expectations. I mean the assumptions of what is a PhD. So let's get into this. Now the first thing you need to grasp is that a PhD is nationally distinctive. So the PhD that exists in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Australia and the United Kingdom is a very different model from the one that exists in North America, in Canada and the United States. And indeed there's a whole series of very interesting models emerging in Southeast Asia and also within the African nations based on these two distinctive models. So for example the University of Lancaster has a campus in Ghana. So that's a great example of how a British model continues to move around the world and British doctoral models are offered there. So in Australia, Aotearoa, New Zealand and the United Kingdom, the PhD is a three-year program and it does not involve coursework. It's composed of a dissertation between 80,000 and 100,000 words based on research that is conducted through the candidature. So the PhD is based on an original contribution to knowledge, original research. A master's qualification is the synthesizing research. That's the difference. People say, what's the difference between a PhD and a master's? Really, really easy, really easy. A PhD is original. A master's is a synthesis. I'm not knocking a synthesis. Remember, I did a research master's and I loved every minute of it, but it is a synthesizing piece of research. Now, in the US and the Canadian model, coursework is enacted. So in the early stages of a PhD, coursework units are undertaken and there are examinations that are benchmarks. So unless a student passes those examinations, they don't move through to the original research. So 
during a PhD, students may publish and they may go to conferences. And that's terrific if they do, because it provides great feedback on their research, and that's terrific. But it is really important to recognise something that's been lost, I think, in the last three to four years. And this is an important truth. You can pass a PhD without having published a single piece of work from it and without attending a conference. So remember, a PhD is a piece of work that is assessed by examiners. No more and no less. Yes, you can go to conferences and that's terrific. Yes, you can get publications and that's terrific. But neither of those things are required to pass a PhD because the quality of a PhD is assessed by examiners. Now, again, the examination models differ around the world. So the examination model that exists in Holland or in Finland is very different from the UK, is very different from Canada. So these models are very different. Having said that, Australia is increasingly the outlier country here because two thirds of our universities maybe it's getting closer to half, do not have an oral examination. All New Zealand universities now have a PhD oral examination. Flinders, for example, doesn't. So that means when you are examined, all that is examined is the document that you submit. The other characteristic of a PhD is that it is guided research. So we talk a lot, and this is really interesting, that the PhD is independent research. Actually, it's guided research. That's why you have a supervisor. Um, and remember, supervisor, supervision. We know some stuff, so we have supervision over your project. You are guided through the project with regular meetings and with feedback from your supervisor. Once the candidature is over, that's when you're doing independent research. So I've written, what, 17 books, 200 plus refereed articles and book chapters. That's independent research. No one supervised me. So it is guided research. Another important point. There are many modes of doctorate. I'm using mode correctly there, okay? We've got the traditional PhD that is between 80 and 100,000 words. There's the practice-led, creative-led PhD composed of an artifact and an exegesis. The exegesis is about 40,000 words in length and objects, analog or digital objects, are submitted with the PhD. You have a PhD by prior publication rare mode of enrolment where someone has an entire academic career, lots of articles, books and stuff, and they enrol for six months, write an intro, write an outro, and submit the publications. And all the publications have been written before the enrolment takes place. Okay, then there's the PhD by publication. That's publication during the candidature. Flinders doesn't have the regs for that and it is a very controversial, internationally controversial mode of doing a PhD. So it's a challenging space around the PhD by publication for a lot of reasons. Then there's the professional doctorate. These are, even in an Australian system, often four years in length. Coursework exists at the start of it and then that facilitates independent research. There's also a higher doctorate five plus years after you leave your PhD program, you can return to your original university, return to Flinders, and gain a higher doctorate assessing your post PhD research career. So that's when you end up with titles like a doctor of letters and so forth. So as you can see, all these different PhDs are different. And the challenge is creating a culture of equivalence between them. One of the reasons I took this job as Dean and didn't return to Europe, I actually stayed in Australia to do this work with you guys, is I love the intellectual puzzle and the challenge of trying to keep the standards high through the different modes of PhD. So it's very difficult to create that parity of expectation and that parity of quality. Very hard and we fail a lot of the time. But I, I think I love the challenge of doing that. But often the split is applied research goes into the professional doctorates 
and blue sky research goes into the traditional doctrine. Now that's an arbitrary division, but you can see what is happening there. And by the way, that's not a statement of quality. Applied research can be as intellectually difficult and rigorous as blue sky research, but they are different. So at the best that we can offer at a university, PhD students experience a lot of different types of things. What they experience at best is a, a, a professional development program that enables their career, enables their CV and actually arches beyond their research. They also experience teaching of undergraduate students, incredibly important, and they also have that experience of conference presentations an array of publishing opportunities and also an array of different types of dissemination. We've talked a lot in these vlogs about the importance of doing journalism and thinking about different styles of writing and communication for your research. So the PhD is an incredibly unique experience and it's really that uniqueness, that distinctiveness I wanted to stress with you all today. So few people on earth have a PhD. In the United States it's reported that only 2% of the US population have a PhD. Wow, but I read an amazing study where someone has configured a series of proxies to try and work out how many people on earth, on this planet, have a PhD. So, you know, suck it and see, but this research showed that the international estimate is there are 15 million doctoral holders on planet Earth. 15 million people hold a PhD on this planet. And you go, well, that's a lot, eh? But then you sort of go, right, well, there's 7.3 billion people on planet Earth. Now, by the maths, that means that on planet Earth, 0.2% of the population on this planet hold a PhD. So this is huge. This is special. This is extraordinary. What you are doing is extraordinary. But it is also distinctive because you're giving up jobs, you're giving up steady money in a difficult time. And why are you doing this? Well, you often want to learn something new. You're curious or you just love research. So I had Nat and Ben in my office last Thursday, and I love them both. They're amazing human beings, and why they're fabulous is they're so passionate about physics. They love physics, and when they're in my office, like the walls like rebound with their excitement and their energy and their passion, and that's really what a PhD is. You've got to love it. Yes, you'll have bad days, but you've got to have that passion that this is exciting, ideas, thinking that's exciting. Now PhDs have three parts and in the old days we used to do one of these parts a year and that was 10-15 years ago but the three parts are you create a research plan or a proposal in the first year, in the second year you do your data collection, in the third year you write it up. Now that's a really old model and we don't do that anymore and in fact all three really happen throughout the candidature and the students who finish quickly and well often write 20,000 words during their first year. They might be the words that require the most drafting at the end, but they are fantastic words. Also what I'd suggest and try and stress with you today is this qualification is about you. It's about you constructing your best self. Don't be a guest star in your own PhD. This is for you. So focus on consistency of work, be resilient and always try and just hold on to what is my original contribution to knowledge. So the point of all of this is you are completing a dissertation, original research that is assessed by international examiners to see if you reach international standards. So thank you to the amazing Mal for this great suggestion. I wouldn't have come up with it without you, mate. You're a legend. And from beautiful Cairns and what looks like it's going to be a beautiful day, I wish you love, light and peace. Tee out.